Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. Sarah Hopwood, thank you so much for joining me as I continue this series four, uh, which is very much focused on education and life skills, problem solving skills. And uh, last week, if you were watching, you're, you would have seen me presenting at the University of Sussex some years ago. And uh, I'm continuing to show some of that footage. And in this half, you'll see me talking about hidden talents. And I tell you a story about how I had long fancied being a hairdresser and at one Christmas my husband bought me a kit from Argus at the time. The scissors were floppy, the handles were floppy and, and the comb, I actually could bend it in half. It was so floppy as well. But from then, and this is now some years on, uh, I have a hairdressing kit and I've got it all here. And when I cut hair, and it's only ever family and friends that come to me by the way, I've probably cut 500 hairs probably over the years, 20 years now or more. And um, it all started from fancying doing something I'd never done before. I'm self-taught. I tell you the whole story of how it happened. I go to a very good hairdresser, obviously um, the skilled and talented ones um, who have had proper training are far better than I am. But I have uh, quite a number of people who come to me and um, it all came from a hidden talent. And uh, if you don't know what your hidden talents are, then maybe ask somebody. It was trial and error to begin with. Um, um, I kind of picked it up quite quickly and that's the key thing about hidden talents above all else. We all have them and uh, you might think you haven't and that's because whatever you're very talented at usually comes very very easy to you so you think it's an absolute doddle, doddle that it doesn't need any skill and so therefore it's not a talent and that is where you are wrong um, hidden talents usually come easy to us and so we may not value it as we should and if you're not sure ask somebody and say to them what is, it, what is it that you think that I'm good at? And they will tell you, and you might find yourself surprised because you didn't call it a talent, when in fact you should have done. I hope that you enjoy the programme and then do come back to me in the second half when I will be talking about entrepreneurial thinking. So enjoy this clip and then I'll see you again in the second half. Take care. Moving on to discovering your hidden talents. One of the main reasons why hidden talents are thought of as hidden talents is because when we're really talented at something, not everything, but something that's a real, real talent, it comes so blooming easy to us, we actually don't value it as a talent. So in a way, it's as if, as if we're masked from it. So if you're not sure about hidden talents, ask people around you, what is it that I'm good at? And they'll tell you some stuff, and if you're not careful, your response could be, yeah, 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 but it's easy. And they're looking at you going, no, it's not. Might be easy for you, but it's not for me. It's a hidden talent. Embrace change. So many people like to be in their comfort zone and they're reluctant to change. I suggest you embrace it. It's in change mode that we grow. Dare to dream. The world is good. You, like everybody else, are aware of negative things out there in the press. Um, you are, have perhaps your concerns. I don't know where you are at your stage in university. My children went through university. They had the same sort of things as they were leaving. Can I tell you this is nothing new? Look back through history and look at generations. Barriers have been there all the time. So dare to dream. Dream big. Think big. And when you're thinking, check in the mirror that you're smiling. Because if you're not smiling, go back and dream again. Okay? Because you're not dreaming properly. Um, and the way that helps you is by dreaming and knowing what you want, then um, you will end up getting to what you want. You always, uh, we always um, focus, we always get what we focus on. So focus on those dreams and ambitions and that's where you'll go. I love it where a politician said it and then somebody locally in the business world said, recession? 
what recession? I'm not participating in any recession. You know, and, and you can choose your attitude. So um, I think the world is good. There's lots out there for you to be excited about. Smile and embrace it and dream. Listen. You know, I was never taught how to listen. Uh, many of us uh, uh, are not taught how to listen. I'm not even sure how listening is embraced in education today. Many of our clients, the biggest challenge for them working within their staff and with their own clients and what have you, is learning how to listen. If we listen to other people, then we can be influenced by who they are and what they're saying and what their interests are. Avoid the need to always be in control. I think of Christmas and birthday presents and because it's very um, close to my heart, we've even as a family have fallen into the habit of, um, yes, we ask people what they would like for presents, but then it's easy to say, okay, if we give you the money, then you can go and buy what you want. I think part of finding hidden talents is being exposed to the influence of other people. As a teacher, I was given quite a few gifts and over the years I've been in our house for 23 years, so I have things that have been bought for me as presents by the people I wouldn't dream of buying for myself. But they've given me great pleasure and in themselves they have revealed, if you like, hidden talents or interests that I would have never even known about if I was totally in control of everything that came my way. Another thing about hidden talents is just know that with no peace, you have no power. So always try and protect peace in your life, seek a peaceful life, and it will help you be exposed and be able to embrace external things, um, which will help feed um, the hidden talent aspect of who you are. And lastly, I just want to share two hidden talents that I've used. One is music. Um, our son, uh, at the age of five, took up the violin. I was about to sell our piano. I'd learnt to play the piano briefly at school but could barely play any notes. And I decided, actually, I'll keep the piano because I can help tune it. And um, what happened then, at the age of seven, Daniel went on to play um, for his grade one exam. I looked at paying for an accompanist and I couldn't believe the extortionate price. That was my reaction. I was thinking, well, they're not examining the accompanist, they're examining the violinist. So, grade one, I accompanied him. And what happened through this sense of serving, of supporting somebody else, I wasn't doing it for myself. I played for him in his next four exams. He got distinction in all four of those exams. I then went on to teach music. I then went on to teach privately at home. And I even then went on to play for church services. All because my, my motive to begin with was just to support somebody else. And the other one was hairdressing. A girl who has everything. Um, my husband asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said, I don't know. I've always wanted to be a hairdresser. Why don't you buy me a hairdressing kit? So he did. It came with a uh, uh, cassette. That's how long ago it was. How to cut hair was on it. A uh, <laughs> pair of scissors with plastic handles. And he sat in the chair and he went, cut. So I watched the, uh, the little film. And I stood there, put the apron round his neck. And the first haircut wasn't too bad, because obviously I had a model, if you like, um, of his, his previous haircut to follow. I can tell you, by the third haircut, he was looking like he'd had a fight with a lawnmower. <laughs> so I said to him, for goodness sake, you are tax partner of a firm of chartered accountants. Please go and get your hair cut properly. You are looking like your wife's hacked at it. And he refused. He said, no, just keep practicing. So I did. And then I started on the kids. Then, <laughs> then the children from school, some of my pupils, would come to my house for haircuts. And I remember one year I did 150 haircuts. I know. And to begin with, the joke was, was that um, I was so um, ill-prepared, was that you could either have a short haircut that would look like this, or you could have a long haircut that would look like that. And it, you literally had like a choice of two haircuts to begin with, and that was it. But anyway, I started to charge, and I remember sat in a marquee, and I raised a lot of money. Anybody walking by, Beach Dreams, if any of you knew Beach Dreams years ago, I sat in the marquee there, and people would donate. And so I used it as a way of 
developing something I always fancied doing. I get great joy from doing it, but all the money that I earned or raised, I've always given to a good cause, either the church or to um, a charity of some sort. And for me, the poignant moment was when my grandfather was so seriously ill in hospital, but he actually looked quite bright on this day, and he'd come from the nursing home, and I don't know who was cutting hair in the nursing home, but enough said that I sat there and it was appalling and it was wonderful for me to get some paper towels and just tuck them in round his dressing gown and to just tidy his hair up for him and just make it nice for him and he actually died about three days later um, and for me it was just a wonderful gift it was a hidden talent that I believe not only did I acknowledge it but I think I ran with it so ask people about your hidden talents be exposed to the influence of other people, find these talents and run with them and share them.